Welcome everyone, Farmer Comp here. This is going to be part one of a guide series on how to use course play on Farming Simulator 22. So what exactly is course play? Well, course play first off is for PC and Mac players only, unfortunately. Um, it will never be for console just because of the scripting involved in course play. Um, I am currently using version 7.1.0.0, which is the one that is out on the mod hub. And it does a few things. So it has a lot of uses for it. Right now, as you can see out there, I have someone cultivating. You can see those kind of lines that are generated on the field. We'll see if he actually handles this uh, corner uh, very well at all, but looks like he's going to just fine. Uh, but regardless of that, so you can see this kind of course that's kind of laid out here and you can hide this too when you're using it if you want to. But you see this kind of course laid out here. We have kind of an odd shape field, field 57, a little odd. Uh, so it has some curves on there. Normal workers will go up and down or up and down however way you want. And then they'll kind of try to get most of it, but they might miss a lot. This is going to help you kind of avoid that quite a bit. So there's a lot of neat, neat features in course play. Um, and it has, again, a lot of uses. So um, you can use it for harvesting, whether that be basic crops, potatoes, sugarcane, sugar beets, cotton, grapes, olives. You can use it for forage harvesting, for planting, for seeding, for plowing, for cultivating, uh, for rolling, for vine work. Um, and vine work is a, a new feature, I should also note as well. So uh, vine work is a new feature. So we'll kind of test it out a little bit and see how it kind of works with that. Um, and by vine work, I mean, you can do stuff with your grapes and olives, including harvesting, mulching, um, that sort of thing. Um, it also can do fertilizing, such as manure spreading, uh, slurry spreading, digestate spreading, solid fertilizer, liquid fertilizer. It can do weeding, uh, whether that be mechanical weeding, uh, spraying herbicide. It can do baling now, forage wagons. You can use those to pick up stuff. I mean, you do tedding, windrowing, and it also mentioned that it can collect bales and wrap bales. I'm a little skeptical of it, but we'll try to get it to work for us. Um, you also can do mowing. What it can't do, it can't do forestry work. So um, it, it can't do forestry work for you or anything complicated like that, any complicated tasks. Um, what it's basically designed to do is help you do field work a little bit easier. And as you can see um, out here on the screen, I'm not hitting everything. There's little pieces that I'm missing here and there, but uh, for the most part, it does really good um, in terms of how to set it up. And I'll give you guys some tips on how to make it work a little bit better for you. Um, it also is not ideal for transportation. You can use it for transportation and record routes that way, but I recommend auto drive if you're gonna do that. And this thing can also be integrated with auto drive if that's something you're interested in doing. Um, you cannot use it to take care of animals or move loose product off the ground either. Uh, how do you install it? Well, I have a video on how to install mods that should be linked down below in the description. Uh, make sure you guys check that out. You install like any other mod off of the mod hub. And again, what are we gonna cover in this video just as kind of our intro video into course play? Uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up just a very basic course to do a simple job and by simple job it's just a job that requires only one piece of equipment like this out here um, so such as plowing cultivating planting harvesting fertilizing nothing like baling or you know vine work or anything like that this will work for tedding and windrowing and stuff like that as well uh, but just basically how to set up a very basic course uh, quite honestly if you just wanted to use it for basic casts after you watch this video you'd be able to use course play for most of your field work uh, right off the bat so and this isn't going to take us too long to cover all this and again with my tutorial videos i try to keep it as short and sweet to the point uh, so future videos will cover everything that i kind of talked about above how to do everything in terms of how course play works uh, hopefully we'll get all those videos done before i head off to uh, farmcon but what's what the goal we have for for all that anyhow we'll also cover how to save a course as this will matter later on um, and anything you watch in this series um, is going to matter in terms of 7.1.0.0 depending on what updates come in the future i may or may not do updated videos depending on what kind of changes but some things may be a little bit different if you're watching this in the future and you're using a different version of course play but in general course play stays mostly the same usually they're just adding new features or they're tweaking different uh uh, bugs that they found and trying to get those fixed. So if anything, you should be better off with the newer version of course play that you have. Um, in addition to that, we'll also cover um, how to save courses because that is gonna matter uh, later on when we do stuff. So we'll make sure we cover that as well. But yeah, let's go ahead and get started with setting up a course here. All right, so we're over here on the field next to field 57. This is where this guy is working on. You can see if you click on him, that's the course that he's working on here. Um, I have a couple of nifty things set up with this course. He's gonna do some headlands around the field. And then after that, he's gonna go up and down the center, but he's gonna skip rows every time. So basically what that means, he's gonna do this row. Well, let's see how if we can go over here. What are we, he's basically gonna do one of the rows, then skip over, do another row, then skip, do a row, and then he's gonna go back and get the rows he skipped. It just makes it easier for turning in that uh, sort of thing there. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna harvest field 56 with this harvester right here. Uh, again, this uh, map actually doesn't have a ton of weird shaped fields, but um, like this one would be kind of good for course play. Uh, so I actually recommend if you're have a lot of nice square fields, just use the regular workers. They honestly do pretty good or as good as course play. Uh, you can use course play if you want, but uh, if you have curves or anything odd, um, you can use course play. The other thing too with course play is I don't think there's any examples on this map, but let's say you had, well, there are maps out there like this though. Let's say you had field 56 and then right in the center of it, there was like an island of grass or an area where there's like a telephone pole or something like that, just in the middle of this field. 
course play can avoid that as it's working around with the worker. So um, it has a lot of nifty features like that. And I am gonna miss some stuff as we're going through, but let's go ahead and go through actually the settings right now, um, since that's kind of something that's a little important. So if we hop into the main menu, you now have this new gear icon over here that says CP next to it. Anything with CP next to it is for course play. So if you have course play installed, um, we're gonna go ahead and select this and you can add course play to an existing save game. I should note that as well. You can add it and you can remove it from an existing save game if you don't like it. So these are kind of the standard, um, the standard settings as you're coming into course play. And we'll go over some of these settings here real quick. First off, course play wages, um, that's how much you're paying your worker. So you can pay them up to 500% of what a normal worker would make, or 100% is just what the standard in-game workers work. Or if you think they were overpaid, you can set it down to 50% or turn it off. Uh, automatic repair, so what this means is it's going to have the course play worker, and it does bill you for it. They're going to repair whatever piece of equipment they're working in um, if it gets lower than 70%. This is probably a pretty good mark to hit. Um, if you are harvesting, since harvesters who have more damage on them or less repair, will harvest left or have a lower yield, I would say just keep it at keep it healthy so it keeps the thing always at 100%. Then you can say don't repair so it's not gonna bother with it and then there's also less than 25%. So a couple different options in there. Fuel threshold, so driver will be released if the fuel percentage is less than this. So basically this means that the driver is gonna stop working if they get less than 5% of fuel um, or you can do less than 0%. So basically when they run out of gas or 100%, which that's not gonna get you very far. Uh, so yeah, just note that. Same thing with the broken threshold. So if you have automatic repair turned off, you can say, all right, as soon as you hit 50%, uh, I want you to stop working. And you can again adjust that up or down however you want. Now down here, expert mode, you can activate that. And there's a whole list of other settings that are down here. Um, not actually really a lot. There's only a couple extra settings down there, but we're gonna leave that as deactivated for now. We're just doing simple stuff today. Uh, game friendly HUD, this is the HUD which can be drilled with the gamepad. So if you had a gamepad that you were using, you might want to turn that on to use that. I'm not going to focus on that at all. That's going to be something you're going to have to experiment on your own. I don't have a gamepad, I don't use one. Action event help and show info text window. Um, these I would have on. Uh, because these are gonna help you kind of give you like little flags up in the corner and different stuff like that as you're going around. Now this bottom one is kind of a, not even a preference really. This is just kind of what it works. So if you're playing on no man's land, you're gonna want this activated. What that means is it's going to sense the custom field uh, you put into a map versus if you have it deactivated, it's going to look at the, the, the field on the map. So if we look at this map, um, we have field 56. So if we have that deactivated, that means it's gonna prefer the fields that are made on the map. So, oh, he stopped over there for some odd reason. That's interesting. I might've actually accidentally stopped him, but regardless of that, um, field 56 here. So let's say, you know, we wanna harvest this. So we're gonna want that deactivated so it's looking for this field. It'll probably still work if it's deactivated uh, one way or another, but let's say we've divided this field up into a bunch of different pieces or we've painted over it and then we have like a little field here, a little field here. You're probably gonna wanna have that setting down here set to activate it so it's gonna look for your custom fields. It's not gonna look for the in-game field. So just something to note there. Now, again, Again, there's one icon in here for settings. Now, soon as we hop into a harvester here, or any other vehicle for that matter, I can't even get into this vehicle here, probably because I'm in flight mode. So let's turn that off right there. There we go. All right, hop into here. As soon as we hop into this vehicle and go in here, we now have some different stuff going on. So this is the one we already knew about. Now we have this. This is where our saved courses and stuff like that and what our courses are doing are all gonna kind of be listed in here. Now, if we go down here, this is specific settings for this vehicle that we're in. So show course, start stop only, which what that means is it's only gonna show the start and stop of the course that you're working on, um, or you can have it show the entire course on the field, or you can have it show none of the course. So you don't have to have it show you any of the course. Start and stop is usually pretty good. Um, open HD with mouse, activate it, which that's what we want. What that means is if I hit um, right click with my mouse, it's gonna open up my mouse and it should open up my HUD, which is probably open right now, but I have the HUD turned to off. So we'll turn that to on and you can see this is the, the HUD here. So right click to open it up. You also can hit control delete and that's gonna open it up, bring your mouse up. So obviously I can't move around. Um, I can still activate stuff if I hold down the mouse button. You can see I'm moving the, the header there if I hold it down, but I can't move around, look around or anything like that. I now have a mouse in game because I can run this. And you also can move this around. So you can move that over there if you're like, yeah, I don't want it in the way. Right click, bring the mouse up, right click to remove it. And that's kind of what you got going on here. So um, let's hop back out of there. Um, open mouse, we got that activated. You can deactivate it if you don't want that. Only turning on the field, activated. So that means it's going to, um, and again, not fossil fall tools. So this is stuff that's in general gonna work with most things. It's not gonna work with everything. So just be aware of that. Uh, so if you have it deactivated, it's gonna, it's gonna allow it to be able to turn off the field. I'm gonna have it activated because that's say you have a lot of junk on the edge of your field. We want it to try to stay on the field as much as possible. Um, you can have it raise tools early, so it means as they're coming up and more they need to raise them, they'll start raising them, or you can have them set to late. So early or late, lower tools, late or early. Again, you can adjust it however you want. Tool offset horizontal, so that's gonna be an offset for you. You can adjust that in here if you'd like. We also can adjust it outside of here, which I'll show you in a second. 
stop while unloading. I always have that activated. What that means is I want this harvester to stop as soon as he gets full and then I can come unload it. However, if you have this set to deactivate it, as soon as you start unloading him, he'll start harvesting again. So it's kind of more efficient, but then you kind of got to drive along him while you're unloading. So it's kind of up to you. Combine self unload, you can activate that. We're not gonna go on that. It will drive to a trailer or near uh, the field to unload, not supported in multi-tools or convoy mode. So just be aware of that. Uh, we're not gonna focus on that too much, but you can have it set to a self unload if you'd like to. Uh, we may do some experiments later on in a future video. Uh, straw swap, so we can turn the straw swap or act activate or deactivate or um, hold on, headlands disabled. So you can say, I want only swaths in the middle, nothing around the edge of the field. Um, so you can do it kind of however you'd like. We'll just go ahead and do headlands disabled. Uh, vehicle debug activated or deactivated enables or disables the debug for this vehicle. We're just gonna leave it deactivated. We're not gonna worry about that or what that's gonna do for us. So those are just kind of some different settings in there. Let's go ahead and set up a course for this. So again, once we get our actual menu opened up, which I'm gonna put this in the middle of the screen so you guys can kind of see it. Um, and actually we'll probably zoom in on it. Potentially, well, probably not actually because that might be a little bit of a pain. Yeah, I'll put it down here at the bottom where it normally is at. So you can have, there's a few different options in here. Again, the Lexan 89, if you click that, it's gonna bring in the settings for that vehicle. If we unclick out of there, um, we have this option right here, which is to record, so we can record our own route. We're not gonna record a route right now. We're not gonna cover that right now. Um, down here, we have some different options. So first off, this working width is at 45.3 feet. You can adjust that down or up. And what that's doing is it's, that's what is basically how wide it's reading this header to be. If you click, if I just adjust this to something it's not, if I click the work width or tool offset, one of these here, it will reset it to what it's supposed to be. And then if I, let's say I have this, I can have this offset. That will automatically enter in there or should automatically enter in there. What that does, is it moves the vehicle offset. So basically if you have across this header is what it's reading as our working width. If you have that offset set, it's gonna move that over, shift that over. So it might be from here to here as opposed to where it should be. So we don't really want that. Again, if I click this, it's gonna reset that and reset the working width. So if I have this set down and this set down here, if I click either one of these, it's gonna reset them both to where they need to be. Now, I recommend actually running it a little bit narrower uh, because on the curves, that'll help it miss a little bit less. So I actually recommend maybe clicking this down a couple notches, but totally up to you. And then if we go up here, we have no course and nearest waypoint. So we're not gonna worry about the nearest waypoint yet. Let's click on the no course. So that's gonna bring us into the course generation menu, which is under workers. So under here, course play, field work, that's what we got going on, we're right here. Um, so you can have target position, field position. So field position, this you can put anywhere on the field you want. That's how you select the field. Target position is right on our vehicle, which is fine. That means it's gonna try to start us over there. Start at first waypoint, so it's gonna put that first waypoint by the target position. You also can put the last waypoint over there or nearest waypoint, however you wanna do it. But we're gonna leave first waypoint. Um, so we down here, we're gonna go uh, open course generator. So then we got a whole bunch of options in here now. Working with, it's set to what we set it outside. We're gonna leave that alone. Multiple tools, we only have one tool, leave this alone. Uh, number of headlands, we're gonna have to do two headlands, which that means it's gonna do two loops around the outside of that field before going to the center. Start work on headland, we can have it start work on the center, um, but we want it to work on the headland first and then move its way in. Uh, headland corners, we're gonna do smooth for this one. You can do sharp, which is kind of what I had set up down here with the, uh, the cultivator. So that's gonna be a sharp corner versus smooth. It's probably a smooth around. It might actually miss a little bit on the corners, but it'll go a little bit quicker and shouldn't stop for you. So we'll do smooth just to kind of demonstrate that for you. Um, we're gonna have it go up and down the field center. You also can have it spiral in the field center if you want it to just basically keep working its way around the center. Uh, racetrack is very similar to that. Um, lands, I haven't experimented with that a ton. And then up and down is kind of the most common. Rows to skip, so if you wanted to skip a row, you could have it skip one, two, three, four, however many rows you want. I don't need it to skip any rows. Um, rows per land, that only is necessary if you have lands set up here, but we're not gonna worry about lands right now. And island bypass mode, you can have it simple or, or no bypass or circle. If there's no islands in there, you might as well set it to no bypass, but if there is like an island, and what it means by island is like, I talked about having something in the middle of the field earlier, like a telephone pole or something like that. You can have it set to circle or simple, depending on what you want. Simple, it's just gonna kind of drive around it. Uh, circle, what it's gonna do is it's gonna get there, it's gonna circle around it and then keep going. So circle is actually probably the best. It is a little bit longer in terms of how long time it takes, but it's a little bit better in terms of hitting everything. So a couple options there. So we'll leave that to no bypass since we don't have any islands. Then down here, generate field work course. You'll click that and then it's not gonna do anything fancy, uh, but we can close this now and you can see it has a course for us. Now it did put our starting point over here, which is a little frustrating, but it happens sometimes. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna drive over there to our starting point, which we should be able to see on the map. We should be able to see it. You can see right there, so it's showing that. And what that is, as we talked about that earlier, in terms of the actual settings in here. We go into here, start stop. So show on course, start stop only. All waypoints, it's gonna show everything, which we're actually gonna turn that on so we can see it all. This arrow is the start point, and there's a stop point somewhere on the map, or somewhere on this field, which actually, if we look at the map, it's gonna show us. Uh, if we go over to worker here, it's over there at the very bottom corner there. So 
Um, start point, it's going to go straight up this line here, so we're going to get ourselves turned around the right direction. I recommend helping it out as best as possible. You may, like if you had um, crop destruction on for this, you may want to back off the field and then turn on your header, and then you might want to harvest to kind of where it starts, which I know I didn't do a great job at that. We can kind of harvest up to right about where the starting point is, get that about center your your vehicle here. And then what we can do is down here, it says nearest waypoint. So it's gonna start at the nearest waypoint to it, which it could register a waypoint somewhere else. If you were like in the middle here, it could register one over here and then try to go off of that one. You can have it start at the first waypoint, which is what I recommend. The last waypoint, which is the very end waypoint, and then nearest waypoint again. So we're gonna do first waypoint over here and hit play. And then it's gonna show you what waypoint it's on on this course. And as you can see, it's going and doing its thing. And again, all everything is here is just set to go. And this is a temporary course. We haven't saved this course. That's why it's listed as temporary. You can stop it at any time, restart it if you would like to, and then you can cancel it over here as well. So we want you to actually go. <laughs> it's not gonna go now. It doesn't like me. Okay, we're gonna un undo that. We're gonna unfold this guy. And then we're actually gonna do nearest waypoint now since we're right here. We'll wait for it to unfold. Boom, all right. And it did all that anyway. So again, it's not a perfect system here, but it's working pretty good for us in terms of everything. So. The click on temporary course, it's gonna bring us in here um, and show us all that. So there you go. All right, so to save your course, what you're gonna to have to do first is you're gonna go down here, you're gonna create a new folder. So we're just gonna call this uh, tutorial and then we're gonna hit enter there. And then after you have a folder created in here, um, you're gonna go down here and you hit save course and then you should hit activate and then it's gonna pull up this. We're gonna say um, harvest one, and there we go. That's gonna activate that, put it in there. So if we go over to this, and then if we had a new folder, let's say this is tutorial two, I'm going here. So if we go down to here, there's no courses. So this is showing that this is saved into this one here, and we can load and do whatever we want with that course. So this course that we're currently working on right now is saved. So if we wanted to exit out of the game, it would pull this course back up for us if we wanted to load it back in. Um, that's very helpful if you're always using the same harvester and same equipment on a field, instead of having to go through the course generation process every time, all you have to do is pretty much reload this course. So if we actually stop this guy real quick right here, and we're gonna just, exit out that course, which is that little cancel button. So we don't have a course right now loaded in. So if we go into the menu here, um, we can go to tutorial one and we can load that course um, and then activate and then that'll load it. So target is not a course. Oh, of course you're having all sorts of issues here. Let's see, all right, go over here. Let's go to this, to this, load course, activate, boom. Okay, there we go. Now we got it to load up and it's gonna bring that course back in for us. And then we do nearest waypoint. We can just continue harvesting just the way we're gonna do, which is pretty awesome. But there you guys go. That is just kind of the introduction to uh, course play. We will do a lot more in future videos. So if you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please drop a like down below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button up on the screen to join the Farmer Cop channel and turn on your notification bell so you don't miss any future videos I may post. This has been Farmer Cop. Thank you guys for coming and for watching.